Hi, I'm Chris Brown, and for the next few moments we're going to be talking about the importance of scales in surface metrology. First, what is surface metrology? Well, we start off with the surface topography, or in mechanical engineering sometimes we call it the surface texture. And these textures are often irregular, kind of complicated geometries, especially if we look at sufficiently fine scales. Now, the, uh, the topographies are created by some sort of processing, could be manufacturing, could be wear, could be corrosion, and that influences their performance. So, what we would like to be able to do lots of times is find relationships between processing, surface, and performance. So surface metrology is the measurement, analysis, and characterization of, uh, of these topographies or textures. And what we're really trying to do, as I said, is understand the relations between the texture and processing on one hand and performance on the other. So let's think about scales. Now when we create a surface somehow, in manufacturing, like by machining or grinding. There are certain scales with which we are interacting with the workpiece material that creates the texture or the topography. And when we go to use that, there are certain scales of interaction that are important. For example, if we're looking at sliding surfaces, lubricated sliding surfaces, there's a scale of interaction that has to do with the thickness of the lubricant that's important. Also, lots of times we like to design sliding surfaces so wear debris is removed from the high pressure interface and so there's a certain scale at which the wear debris needs to move into the topography or the rough surface. So, these irregular components, and we'll emphasize this again, are, can be complicated and not differentiable. And uh, so we're not actually doing derivatives, but finite approximations generally, because they're not differential. So anyway, we measure, we get a measured texture. We'll talk more about this in a moment. There's certain scales at which we make the measurement, and those I'll be looking at in more detail, as I said in a moment. Then we get these measured textures, which can be millions or more elevations in a data set. And then we need to analyze these. We need to characterize them somehow and come up with texture characterization parameters. Now, we also need to characterize the behavior, the performance somehow, and how we made the surface. So this might be the feed in manufacturing, the abrasive that we're using in grinding. And then what we'd like to be able to do for quality assurance or quality control be able to discriminate good textures from bad by the way they were made or the way they're performing or going to perform. And we'd also like to find correlations so that we know how to design the, the surface processes, uh, the manufacturing processes that make the surface, and, uh, and we can design the surface we want that behaves the way we want it to for friction or adhesion. So, surface metrology is about roughness. And here's an example of a rough surface. Now, surface topographies are often irregular, as I was saying, right? especially at fine scales. And this is, these are also the scales where the interactions occur that, uh, that are going to control many of the phenomena that are important for uh, the performance. Now, so the location of sort of points, let's say, on a rough surface, cannot be easily described with algebraic loca uh, equations. Algebraic equations are made for smooth things, and the surfaces often are distinctly not smooth, and we have to deal with the uncertainty um, in, uh, in the location of the uh, surface of the uh, of the surfaces and of the points on the surface. So often we're using statistical descriptions 
and we'll talk more about those in another video. So what are the possible definitions? Well, roughness often is just what's occurring at a fine scale. Or it can be the deviation from an ideal surface. This is often used in engineering. Now, we've been talking about irregular topographies, which might be nowhere differentiable. So this essentially means they're not smooth. They could also be what remains after removing the form and waviness, and something that could be characterized by an arithmetic average. Very often people just say, here's the arithmetic average. So, uh, so these are different kinds of irregular topographies, right? So we take out form and waviness. Form might be the roundness in a ball bearing, for example, or uh, the curvature in a shaft. Um, and then the waviness is kind of in between the form and the roughness. All right, so let me see if we have something else. So it might be some combination of these things as well that we're talking about. But what's of particular interest to us here is the irregular components of the topographies. So when we look at surface metrology, this measurement and analysis of surface textures, what's important? Well, it's important that we can have some repeatability and reproducibility, at least within some understood bounds. This is good for quality assurance, so we can engage somebody to make something in one place that can then uh, be um, used and verified in another place. Um, and everybody can agree that, yes, that is within the specification. So, so it's a quality assurance. Get the agreement between the buyer and the seller. But also, as we were talking about, somehow, how do we discriminate with confidence? This is important for quality assurance. Turns out it's also important in fields like anthropology and archaeology and forensics. Can we tell, for example, which bullet a gun, came, uh, which gun a bullet came out of? Can we tell what uh, tool was used for that is found in an archaeological dig? And in physical anthropology, can we tell what animals were eating by the marks on their teeth? Also, this discovery of functional correlations so that we can use these in product and process design. And these are the ones that uh, we're going to emphasize most here in our thinking today. All right. So are there principles for surface metrology? And so when we're, uh, when we're looking to understand interactions, in other words, when the interactions with a surface influence or are influenced by the topography, as in processing or performance, then correlations with and discrimination of what we were just talking about for value that are consistent with the processing or the behavior, i.e. the performance, will be most evident when these following conditions are satisfied. So this is what we're proposing here for principles. Scales. We need to measure, analyze, and characterize the surface at the appropriate scales or over the appropriate ranges of scale. Any choice of scale will not be appropriate. Geometries. What are the important geometrical characteristics that we're interested in, either for this particular process or this particular kind of performance? Fidelity. So when we measure these surfaces, we need sufficient fidelity so that we can do the analyses and the discrimination of correlation. So that's fidelity in the measurement. How close is it to the actual surface? And then statistics, because these surface are, surfaces are irregular, we need to use some kind of statistics in bringing together these uh, characterizations um, from all of the measurements. All right. So what scales do we have in a measurement? Well, the upper scales, when we go to measure a surface, the uh, instrument will give us a certain length and width. And here I've just brought uh, an example of a, of a rough surface. 
and then we have some vertical things. So this is uh, uh, measuring dental microwear. All right. So we've got the range or the size of the measurement at the upper scales. Now at the lower scales, here's some interesting things. So uh, we have the sampling interval. In other words, we measure the height. And we can't measure the height at a point. It's actually impossible to know the height at a point because the point is infinitesimally small mathematically. So we really know the height in some finite zone. And then we measure the height in this zone and we move over and measure it in the next zone. At least figuratively speaking, a confocal microscope, they're all measured sort of simultaneously or a vertical scan. Now, the relative size of the sampling zone and the sampling intervals can change. So here we have sampling zone and sampling interval equal. Here the sampling interval is smaller than sampling zone. Here it's greater than. The other thing is for measured surfaces in general, surfaces that are not smooth or cannot be approximated by some sort of algebraic formula, we cannot know all the heights on a surface. Because if we know a height at one location and the next location, we cannot, with perfect certainty, predict the height or know the height at an intermediate location unless the surface is highly regular or smooth. All right, so how can we exploit scales in surface metrology? Now, conventional analyses um, we use filtering, and this can be just, we filter out the form, we filter out the waviness, or we filter just to look at the roughness. And so that's conventional. We can also use bandpass filtering, where we decide, all right, let's use a narrower band than is conventionally used for roughness. The autocorrelation function looks at scales. The Fourier, or the power spectral density, also is scale sensitive. That looks over a range of uh, spatial frequencies. Um, the structure function is another, and wavelets are another. But there's a set that we've been working on at WPI, and uh, these are based on simple geometries. How long is a profile? Like, how long is the coast of Britain? How large is the surface in area? Like, how large is the surface of Vermont? How much volume is available on the surface to fill? Um, what are the average slopes on the surface? And what are the curvatures on the surface? So all of these things on an irregular surface can vary with scale. That's why I've hyphenated them all here with scale. And all of these things have rather clear physical interpretations. Um, and, and while these have physical interpretations as well, um, these length, area, filling, slope, and curvature, I think, are more clear. So this gives us a kind of system for taking a look at how to exploit scales in surface metrology. Thank you very much for your attention.